Hello and welcome to Microsoft Office Word 2007 Shortcuts for Accents and Symbols, a Microsoft Office tutorial presented by Logon to Learn, powered by KnowledgeWave. In this session, we will cover how to quickly and easily insert accented characters and special symbols into Word 2007 documents, and even how to create your own keyboard shortcuts. Now, if you want to work with symbols and accented characters in Microsoft Office Word 2007, you're going to want to be familiar with the Insert tab because that is where you're going to find, on the far right, the button for Symbol, and in fact there is a Symbols group which also contains equations. In order to insert a symbol, you just simply need to click on the button and locate the symbol that you wish to insert and click on it, and then click the Insert button. So let's say, for example, that we wanted to type the word cafe and spell it with an accented E on the end. So we begin by typing at least the first part of the word. Let me zoom in here a little bit. And now we look for our symbol. And when you click on the symbols button, you're going to see several commonly used and needed symbols. But for what we're after, we need to get into more symbols. And then choose the same font as the font that you're using. In this case, the base font, the default font of Calibri. Once you're in the font, then you can locate the accent and character. If you open up subsets over here on the right, you should be able to get what you need a little bit quicker. The basic Latin or Latin 1 supplement should give you accent and characters no problem. There we go. There's my E. Simply click on it and Click the insert button down here in the bottom right, and there we are. Close the symbol box when you're done. Now another way to work with symbols is to use autocorrect, in which case these are pretty much built into Microsoft Word already. Things such as copyrights, trademarks, registered trademarks, m dashes, arrows, and emoticons are all going to be created automatically when you key in certain character sequences. For example, here we go, going to do the one for copyright. You simply use a left parenthesis and a C and then a right parenthesis and you automatically get a copyright symbol. For trademark, it's pretty much the same deal, only you're going to use TM instead. Let me turn off my non-printing characters so we can see this more clearly. Zoom in. So parentheses, TM, close parentheses, gives us trademark. And then for the registered trademark, we do parentheses, R, close parentheses. Notice how these are all superscripted. Copyright is usually not superscripted, but trademark and registered trademark are usually superscripted in comparison to the rest of the text, and they're already set that way. When you're typing in, you need to set off an expression using an, an, an M dash, which is a longer dash. You can create those automatically as well in Word. By typing two dashes and then continuing to type, the two dashes will fuse into an M dash. There you go, just like that. So that's an easy way to get an M dash without having to click around anywhere. Use the insert symbol button on that. You can also get arrows automatically, like so. By just typing two dashes and then a greater than sign, you get an arrow that points to the right. Just like that. If you want an arrow that points to the left, reverse it. A less than sign and then two dashes. And if you want a thicker arrow, use equal signs instead of dashes like this. Now, as soon as I press the space bar, autocorrect takes over in Word, and it replaces that with a different symbol. And if I don't want that, I can go ahead and undo automatic bullets. It wants to, it's making this into a bulleted list, actually. You can also use this for emoticons. 
Emoticons are when you type a colon and then a parentheses sideways in order to approximate a smiling face or perhaps a not so much of a smiling face. But whenever you do this in Word, it automatically becomes the wingding symbol for the actual smiley face icon. You can also enter in symbols using keyboard shortcuts. If I need a non-breaking space, for example, then I can, instead of pressing the space bar like I normally would, I can do shift, control, or I can do alt control. If I want a space that does not break when it reaches the end of the line, I can use a keyboard shortcut for that one, which is control shift space bar. So for example, if I was typing the name of a company, and I don't want this to break when it reaches the end of a line, then I can put non-breaking spaces in here instead of regular spaces. Now they won't look any different unless you have the non-printing characters turned on, and that's really, of course, the point. They don't look any different than regular spaces, and certainly not when you're printing. However, if this text were to reach the end of the line, it would not break when it reaches the end of the line. But in order to reveal what the characters look like, let me turn on non-printing characters, which we do here on the paragraph group on the Home tab. And you see what regular spaces look like, right? They're a mid-level dot. So let me replace that with a non-breaking space and you'll see the difference. It looks rather like a degree symbol, but that is a non-breaking space. So if I was to add this at the end of a paragraph, let me just cut that out of there, and let's say I paste it right about here. I'm at the end of this paragraph. Let me zoom out a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna click right in here and just paste this right in here. And you see, even though normally a few of these words would be occupying the line up here, they don't because of the non-breaking spaces. Now when I turn off the non-printing characters, you can't tell. You can't tell. But if this was the name of a company, maybe you wouldn't want that to be breaking when it reaches the end of the line. For branding reasons, you want it to be seen as a whole entity whenever it gets read. So you don't want that to break. So you can use non-breaking spaces for that. Likewise, you can do this something similar for non-breaking hyphens. Here I've typed the word Coca-Cola, as you can see, and it's hyphenated. And if I worked for Coca-Cola and didn't want this to be in here like that, I wouldn't want this to be breaking like this, I'd put a non-breaking hyphen in here. And that's pretty much done the same way as a non-breaking space. You just do control shift and then hyphen or underscore. And now we have a non-breaking hyphen. And as soon as I leave off of that word, you can see that it does not, in fact, break at the beginning of the line like it did previously. If you want to create your own keyboard shortcuts for certain symbols, you certainly can do that. One symbol, for example, that uh, people who work in the legal system need to use a lot is the section symbol. Now that's easily easy enough to find. I can go to the Insert tab. I can go to the Symbols button. And if I don't find it in here, I can just click on More Symbols, go to my Special Characters tab here, and there's Section. I can click on it and insert it, just like that. And here you see it appear over here on the left. But I would rather be able to pop this in a little bit faster than that, considering how often that I would have to do it. So I can create my own shortcut key for it or my own autocorrect entry for it. It's a little bit easier to use a shortcut key for it in this case, especially because a really good keyboard shortcut is not already assigned, which would be Alt-S. So let me show you how to do a keyboard shortcut here. Basically, what I do is I just press the keys on the keyboard for whatever shortcut I think that I want. In this case, I want Alt and S. And here it tells me that this is currently not assigned to anything. So I'm going to go ahead and assign it. Here's the Assign button on the bottom left. I just click that. And we're all set for that. Close out of here. Close out of here. And now, 
all I have to do on my keyboard is press Alt S and I'm entering in a section character. And you can do this for pretty much any symbol you want. The trick is finding keyboard shortcuts which have not already been taken and which you're not likely to use. So those are some of the ways in which we can work with symbols and accented characters and put them into Microsoft Office Word 2007 documents. We hope this session has been informative. Thank you for choosing Log On to Learn, powered by KnowledgeWave, educating the world anytime, anywhere.